Amen. Amen. It's just it's not privilege for everybody to see. Um, when it comes to God, God will show us those parts of him when it's needful for him to show us or to mm -hmm. reveal to us. Right. Okay. There were certain things that he showed to the children of Israel, uh, bringing them out of bondage, uh, that they didn't know existed in him until they got into the desert place. Right. And then they saw him in a different regard. Welcome to the Kingdom Living Podcast, a production of Kingdom Life Ministries International of Elizabethtown, Kentucky, headed by senior pastors Dr. Ray and Lillian Romero. The title of this episode is Time is Not Relative to God. It's irrelevant. Here now is Senior Pastor DeLillian Romero to start off our podcast. Whole, healthy, healed, set apart, Father God, and I thank you right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. We rejoice and we are what glad in it. I couldn't even wait. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome to Kingdom Life Ministries International. My name is DeLillian, Pastor DeLillian Romero, and my husband, Dr. Ray Romero, uh, uh, pastors, head pastor here at the Kingdom Life Ministry in Elizabethtown. I just rejoice, and I am glad you're a part of the program today. Amen. God's going to do something great. I could not wait this year to say for my birthday. So this is something you all need to say. Every time it's your birthday, you say it every day. This is the day the Lord has made. I rejoice and I'll be glad in it. Jesus. But this time for my birthday, I said, this is the day the Lord has made me. Hallelujah. Oh, I rejoice and I'm glad in it. Amen? Amen. So Amen. we just welcome you today. We pray God is doing something great. We just pray for our sick and uh, those that are having some discomfort in their bodies, we pray that the Lord God is blessing you, that the Lord God is keeping you, that the Lord God is holding you, and I pray that the Lord, that you are staying close to the Lord. Amen? Amen. Because if we move, we have a problem. Amen? Amen. Adam and Eve was all right when they were in the garden. They didn't have too many any struggles or anything. But as soon as they got into disobedience and they got out, then they hard times start, started for them. Amen? Right. But glory to God for the hard times because it reminds us that we need a Savior. Mm -hmm. We need a Savior, and that Savior is Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Redeemer. Amen? So glory to God, we want to welcome you today again. Amen. Welcome, 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 welcome. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And we welcome the presence of God here to uh, do great and mighty things. We're going to open up. Sister Linda's going to come up and, and pray, and then we got Brother Newsign, Pastor Dr. Newsign back in from Europe, and we have Brother Jimmy that's going to give a word, so I'm going to be quick, and we're going to just move on with the service today. If you have a comment or a prayer request, please post it, and we'll pray for you. Everybody say amen. 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 Glory to God. Amen. Come on up, Sister Linda. Hallelujah. 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 Everybody glad to be in the house of God this morning. Yes. Yeah. God is good all the time. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And all, all the right. time. All, all the time. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. My word today is from John 16, 24. Until now, it says. Until now. Until now. Everybody say that. Until now. Until now. Yes. Until now. Jesus. You have asked nothing mm -hmm. in my name. Yes. You, know, you have asked nothing. So what do you expect if you've no, never mm -hmm. asked? What do you expect? You know? And it says, Ask, and you will receive. Yes, yes, God. So we have to ask right. yes, to Jesus. receive. Yes. Mm. And it says that your joy, Sister Delilian, Pastor Delilian was mentioned joy. Joy. That joy. your joy may be made full. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So everything that you ask, yes. you shall receive. Yes. And your joy shall come. Yes. So that's the thing this morning. It is until now. Until now. So now is the time that you can ask. Amen. Now is the time yes. to ask. Yes. 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 And you shall receive. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. So it says until now. You know, yes. if you don't do it now, now, then you don't you don't have nothing. You well, gotta ask. Jesus. 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 Yeah. Jesus. You shall receive. Yes. Mm. So the word of God this morning is to ask yes. and you shall receive. 
So that's why we ask for healings. That's why we ask for businesses. That's why we ask for checks in the mail. Yeah. That's why we ask for all these things. Yeah. Because we know that if we ask, he said his word doesn't lie. Yes. He right. said we shall receive. Yep. So this morning, let's just believe God. Yes. Okay. Amen. Father God, we just thank you this thank morning. You, it's a great thank morning, you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, that it is a new day, a new yes. time. And Lord God, that we trust you. We trust you and we believe in your word. And Lord God, that you have touched us. Mm -hmm. That you have opened our eyes and our hearts to your word. And Lord God, we know that we can feel your presence with us at all times. Yes. And Lord God, we just know that you are <coughs> answering every, every prayer. That you are answering every question. That you are answering anything that we got going on. That you are answering it. So, Lord God, we just thank you this morning yes. that you are the answer. Yes. And we have the joy. Yes. And our joy is in you. Yes. And, Father God, we just thank you for that this morning. In oh, Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay. <laughs> Pastor Newsom. <laughs> Amen. 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 Pastor Amen. 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 So, hey, I've been gone for a minute. My name is Pastor Newsom Dorley. It's Amen. good to be back in the building. Amen. 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 Pastor the Legion had has has created a fire within me today. Because it was right in line to some of the things I was thinking today. Yeah. I'm gonna share with you all. Uh, I've been gone for about two and a half years, but it feels like it's been gone for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. But what came in my spirit this morning, uh Pastor the Lydian was talking about uh, sororities and, and fraternities, how it's yeah. been aligned with certain ideologies, let's yeah. put it that way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Certain beliefs, mm -hmm. certain things that mm -hmm. drives the way the world thinks. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. There are principles that drive the world. Right. There are certainly principles. Yeah. And demonic forces uh -huh. that drive the world. Have you ever noticed we don't really talk about the demonic possession of Gen Genesis 3? Mm -hmm. Well, well. It's the first time we encounter demonic possession right. of an animal speaking, the serpent. Mm -hmm. But have you really heard anybody preach about that? No. Mm -hmm. It's a demonic possession mm -hmm. of an animal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't hear animal talking, mm -hmm. but here we see the serpent talking, which yeah. is the devil that shows up in, Je in, in Matthew, right? Mm -hmm. It's the same devil. Yeah. Bring well, the same thing. Right. Yeah. Right? But we don't talk about these things. Mm -hmm. That means there are greater truths. There are certain truths we just don't attach ourselves. I'm not getting here today. But first, the pastor has <laughs> risen something behind me. Mm. We live in a contrary time. Yes. Mm. yes. Where lies of people are dying over lies mm. to become truth. Right. Mm -hmm. Ah. Come on. People are dying over lies. They want to make them true. Yes. Exactly. Yes. That's the society right. we live in right now. Mm -hmm. But even then, that's not even enough. I, I want to read the story. I got, Pastor, I got about five minutes. I want to take five <laughs> minutes, ten minutes, because I've been gone for a minute. Mm -hmm. And the story of the young rich ruler was in my spirit this weekend. Mm -hmm. Because as Christians, we can be sitting here and we thinking we're doing enough. Well, but look at what the story of the young ruler says. Mm. Behold, that's Matthew. It's in, two, it's in Matthew 16, uh, 19, 16 to 22, but there's a longer version in Mark. Mm -hmm. Jesus counseled the rich young ruler, the one in Matthew says. Now behold, one came, to, one came and said to him, Good teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may enter eternal? Mm -hmm. So he said to him, why do you call me good? Mm. No one is good but one. Yeah. Jesus Christ is referring to himself. Yeah, yeah. He's the one. That is God. Yes. But if you want to enter eternal life, keep the commandments. He said, which ones? Jesus said, you shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. Mm -hmm. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You honor your father and your mother. And you shall love your neighbors as yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. Neighbor is not just the person next to right. you at your right. neighborhood. Right. <laughs> right? Right. The young man said to him, All these things I have kept from my youth, what do I still lack? That's a question for us Christians today. Mm -hmm. That's the question. I'm, I'm doing every, the young 
free shooter that said, I'm doing everything yeah. in a righteous manner. Uh -huh. mm. I, I, I'm living this righteous life you already mentioned. I'm living all the commandments mm -hmm. while I still left. Mm -hmm. Jesus said to him, if you want to be perfect, go. Mm. Sell what you have and give to the poor and you shall have treasure in heaven. Mm -hmm. And come follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went around sorrowful, mm. for he had great possessions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Saints, we could have everything in the world, well, but if we don't have Jesus, come on. we got nothing. Come on now. We could be searching and seeking in the grind. This is the current state of our society. Mm -hmm. In search of pleasure, in search of things perhaps, we often forget this story about mm -hmm. the young ruler. Mm -hmm. He had everything. But when Jesus changed the scenario, he was attached to those things. Yeah. Not God. You're right. Right. Not God. Uh, it's invaluable for me this morning to remember yeah. the things that drive my faith. Uh -huh. The things that drive my ambition. Mm. If it's not attached to God, it's all vanity. Come on, man. That's right. Come on. If it's not a text, if I'm not putting Matthew 6.33, seek ye first the kingdom yeah. of God, all of it's vanity. Yeah. Right. All right, of right. it's passing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All of it's a grinding that leads to nothing. Mm -hmm. And that's the crux of our society this morning. We all searching for things. We all searching for things, great things yeah. that God created. But God said, if only you will seek me first. Come on. If only you will search for me first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If only you will put the kingdom of God first. This story is for me yeah. first. You know. mm -hmm. I, I told you I was just pondering on it. Yeah. I'm just sharing with you Come on. what my mind ran to this weekend. Mm -hmm. This is not about you. I'm just sharing with you. <laughs> okay. I cannot be a hypocrite this morning. Yeah. This is first to pick it to me. Yeah. What is it you're looking for, son? Yeah. What is it you're searching for? Come on. My daughters. Mm. My child. Yeah. Okay, I'm just sharing with you what my spirit was speaking to me this week, mm -hmm. this weekend. Okay? Amen. God bless you all. It's Praise good you. to be back. Yeah. yeah. For a couple of months. Yeah. I have yeah. left with you all. Yeah. So it's good to be back, y'all. Amen. 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 God Amen. bless you all. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday to you. Happy Sunday. I'm going to tell you all newsflash right now. The <laughs> devil just lost out on the gun range. All right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We, ra we rattled that sword. Yeah. And he chopped. He got to beat Amen. Very much to beat it. So. Uh, so, glad to see everybody. I'm glad to be here today uh, my, myself too, because otherwise I probably would not have been here to the class. However, however we made it. Glory. Yes, yes, Amen. we made it. So, as I was coming home, well, coming down here today to church, I was listening to my program, Joel Osteen, on the radio, and this verse came across. There's an there website, their uh, services. This verse that I'm going to share, I love it. All right. It sounds very, very good for what fits in today. Verses Revelation chapter 12 verse 11. And it says, and They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Yes. 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 Blood of the Lamb. Woo. Jesus. Blood of Glory. Over all of us. Yes, yes, yes indeed. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Yes, I love it. Glory to God. <laughs> and by the word of our testimony, mm. everything we share out there with everyone, your own word, God's word is right there with you. Mm. Praise the Lord. I love it. We can share it and give it to others. <laughs> then they love their lives. Mm -hmm. I don't love my human life. Right. I love my spiritual life. Right. My yeah. spiritual life is right there with God and Jesus. Amen. And blessings are right there 
for us. Amen. 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 Woo! Yes. Amen. Amen. Exactly. Yes. Hallelujah. Love not their lives. Job. Our human lives are dead. No more. Our human lives have gone by the wayside. Our spiritual lives are now there with us. And that spiritual life is the most powerful, energizing, extreme awesomeness that you can have in you. Yes. And it's just so great to have that today. And have that always and forever. Amen. We want you to get that too also. Amen. Please enjoy it because it's the best thing there is out here today. Yes, yes. Especially with the, way, with the way everything's going on right now in this country. Amen. To my darling Cindy, I got your message. We all praying for you. I'm praying for you, darling. That, uh, that sickness on that leg, I command it in the name of Jesus to flee! Yes. Flee! Yes, yes. You are not welcomed. Hallelujah. My darling Cindy, you are not welcomed on the body. No weapon formed against us shall prosper because we have the two-edged sword yes. that chops the devil. Yes, yes. Chops the devil. Amen. He is defeated always. Amen. God, thank you for today. Thank you, thank you for Jesus. your many great Lord, blessings. Oh, awesome God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, Just come into our house today. Give us your great word. Bring it to us. Let us go out there and share that great word. God, the devil is defeated. He can look at us and say, you got to sit look at this and say that you're defeated because I'm the storm. And I can look at him and say, no, you're not the storm. I'm the storm, and I defeated you. You are dead. You are no longer. You are conquered. Because my God, my Savior, the blood of his son Jesus reigns forever and ever. Thank you so much, Father God and Jesus. Thank you, thank you. We just ask that Pastor Ray gives his word today. Let it sink into our souls. Let it sink into our spirits. Just let it flow throughout Pastor into us so that we can take it out and let it flow from us into the others out here in the world. Now, God, we thank you for everything you do for us. We thank you for the extreme abundance coming our way. Thank you for thank you for healing for everything everything that you give to us the extreme abundance of all things we ask this now God in your precious and mighty and holy name in the name of your son Jesus 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 Amen and amen. And I'd like to introduce to you now Dr. Ray Romero, our, our pastor, Kingdom Life Ministries. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Come on. Our love is exciting. Y'all love is exciting. Oh, yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Jesus. Excitement. Praise God. It's contagious. Amen. That's right. It is. Glory to God. And I believe that's the way it needs to be. I believe that. Our excitement for the Lord and what He has done and what He's doing um, should be contagious. Amen. People, people should look at you, and you should create such an impact in their life um, that they begin to wonder, "What? What is it about you? Why are you different? Why there's something about you? I, I may not know exactly what it is, but I know that there's something about you." That marks you as being mm -hmm. different, Jesus amen. And, and, yes. uh, and I believe that's Glory how we should be. Yes. Glory to God. Oh, and yeah. so, yeah, uh, Deacon Jimmy's excitement um, has just uh, 
Uh, oh, excited man. me on the inside, oh, and I'm standing over here just yeah, chuckling to myself. Too. Glory to God. Because um, I'm, I'm, yes. I'm excited about yeah, it, and, and uh, thank yeah. God for it. Amen. Uh, amen. Amen. Well, amen. Glory to God. We got him on the run. I don't know if y'all know that or not. Amen. You know, you got you know the, the enemy comes in in uh, seasons and in certain times, um, and and it's a matter. And I believe it was uh, Dr. Newsom sometimes shared about the sons of Issachar who understood the times. Amen. They understood the, the times, um, and and I think and believe that um, in our message on what we've been sharing here, uh, timing is really really vital. And those mm -hmm. of y'all watching with us, uh, uh, we thank God for uh, being able to be before you today, and for y'all tuning into Kingdom Life Ministry. Um, but all these things that we're teaching on, I'm believing that they're all going to tie together. To make yep. us better at who we are, Amen. Uh, in Great. a better relationship with God, uh, understand God um, in a, another or in a deeper understanding or revelation. We use we use certain words, church words like revelation and uh, other words, but really, it, what it comes down to, it, it comes down to. Uh, I see another aspect of God that I've never seen before. Oh, yeah. I, need a, I see another side of God that I've never seen mm -hmm. before. Yeah. Amen. Um, you, I don't know if y'all ever been in a situation where you responded a certain way and they look and they say, well, I've never seen that side of you. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. right. uh, y'all ever been there before? Right. Uh, glory to God. I, I, I've never seen that side of you. Well, how many of y'all know that, that there are different sides to us, amen? Mm -hmm. right. And you're not going to see all my sides at one time. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you get the opportunity, you'll, you'll see certain parts of who I am right. and how I respond to certain situations. Right. Um, but it's not privileged for everybody to see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. It's just it's not privileged for everybody to see. Um, when it comes to God, God will show us those parts of him when it's needful for him to show us or to mm -hmm. reveal to us, right. okay? There were certain things that he showed to the children of Israel, uh, bringing them out of bondage uh, that they didn't know existed in him until they got into the desert place. Right. And then they saw him in a different regard. Right, they right, saw right. him as they needed him. Amen. Amen. So uh, in the beginning of the year, and, and uh, in, in my teaching, I always like to do review. Okay, <laughs> review is good mm -hmm. so that we can understand. Um, you know, uh, doing a, a hermeneutical or a, a, um, a, a line, a scripture, is good to preach off of. Um, I, like, I like the method of review. Right. Because the more we review, the more you're going to get understanding of it. Amen? Right. And the more that I'm going to tell you, the more that I review, I get a different aspect of God right. when I review his word and I go over it. So we started out in January talking about not the new year, but the new you. Right. Amen? Mm -hmm. And I hope in these teachings that you're realizing that it's not about the year. The year is going to continue. The days are going to pass, the 24 hours, the weeks, whatever it might be, the seconds. Those things are going to pass. But what's happening is that in those times passing, I'm understanding that I'm handling all these situations in a different way mm -hmm. simply because I'm understanding God in another way. Amen. 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 And so as I'm growing into this new year, the new year is not going to dictate to me how it's going to treat me. But because I understand the new me, I'm able to overcome obstacles that are going to come at me in this new year. I'm going to be able to face challenges differently because I understand it's a new me. Amen. Amen. Y'all understanding. I, I hope y'all are understanding there's a new you in this, okay? It's not about uh, uh, um, how I'm going to react as the old person. 
Because if you react like you did in the old person, it didn't get you very far. Mm -hmm. right. Amen. Right. But when I understand the new person and the new me, mm -hmm. I'm able to handle situations differently, more effectively, mm -hmm. and in a more mature level. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And so uh, I'm growing into the new me. I, 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 you know what? I know people that have been in church for 30 and 40 years, and they're still drinking milk. Mm. Amen. 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 They're still on milk. They, they, they hadn't even gotten to the bread, uh, much less getting to the meat of the word of God or the understanding of the things of God. They're still uh, drinking milk. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I don't think God wants us to be that way. I, I believe that the Lord spent an X amount of days or years with his disciples, and then he said, it's time for me to go. Mm. Amen. 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 I've, I've taught you what you need. Okay, I've showed you. I've been with you. i lived with you. Uh, you ate with me. We, we've done everything together, but it's time for me to go. I believe that what he was saying, that it's a time for you to mature, to grow up, and to be responsible. Yeah. Well, uh, mm -hmm. Amen? Y'all yes. with me? Yes. It comes a time when I have to grow up, I have to be mature, right. and I have to be responsible. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? And so... Then, as we came out of that, and it's a whole elaborate teaching on the new me, uh, y'all can go back and look at the archives. You can do your own studying. As a matter of fact, I challenge you to do your own studying to get more understanding. Uh, then we went into uh, the theme of uh, trusting in God's timing. Uh, God's timing is not our timing. He responds. He acts differently certain times, certain ways. Uh, certain seasons, we call it seasons uh, um, that we go through. Uh, however you want to dice it up, however you want to compile it, however you want to put it together, I live according to a time that God has given me as a present, okay? Time is a gift that God gave to us in order for us to operate in, but God does not necessarily have to operate in our time. He just took a piece of time and put it into who he okay. is and says, now, this is what I want you to operate in. Amen. Amen. This is what I want you to live in. But I actually live outside of time. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. But like Pastor Nusan said earlier, he said this. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Amen. 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 So there's a kingdom. There's a method. There's a process. There's a, something that I have to look for in order to understand how the kingdom of God operates. How can I operate in time, but still operate in a supernatural way? Mm -hmm. Where time doesn't affect me, but the truth is, mm -hmm. I affect time. Mm -hmm. right. Amen? Right. Are y'all affecting your time? Well, Amen? Yeah. Yeah. See, the world system should not dictate how we operate, but we should dictate how the world system operates. Well. Oh, I know that's a big, yeah, a yeah. big that's Come a on. that's Come a big on. step right there, okay? We because I, because the way I look at myself, uh, most of the time I look at myself as how the twelve spies went into the promised land, and what they did is they walked into another dimension of time. They walked into another place. They walked into another time zone, another area, another territory. They walked into it, and what they saw overwhelmed them. Yeah. Amen. Not knowing that I got the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, okay? I got the God that operates, that put everything in motion, constructed everything, submitted everything, and said, hey, this is good. Amen. 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 That same God is the God that lives on the inside of me yes. today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. Right. Okay? Yeah. That same God that says, I am who I am. Is the same God that lives on the inside of you that says you are who you are and who you are is created in my image. And the very thing that I'm able to do and the things that I possess is on the inside of you, which now you should be able to operate and function and work in. Well, well. Amen. Amen. But what they did is they went in there looking at small, insignificant people in who they saw themselves as grasshoppers are a small insect compared to everybody else that was in this new land. Mm -hmm. Now understand, this land belonged to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. right? Right? 
So which tells me is that there's a territory and there's a land that God wants you to go in to possess, but you can't possess it until you recognize who I am. Mm -hmm. The new me has the ability to go in and possess what God has already promised me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yes. Amen. But what they did is they went into another time zone, another district, another location, another job, another business, whatever it might be, they stepped into it and they said, we're not able to do it. We're not able to conquer it. We're not able to take it over. But praise God, there's always one or two in the midst. Amen. Amen. Yes. How many of y'all know? Glory to God. He says, wherever two or three are gathered, Right. I'm there with you. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. So even if it was two that encouraged themselves in the Lord and came back and said, hey, I don't know about the rest of these ten. All right. I don't know about them, but I do know that we are well able to go in and possess this land. Amen. 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 So there are territories, there are dimensions that God is calling us to, to go in and to possess and to operate, to function and not for them to dictate to us who we are, who we're going to be, right. but to dictate to them, this is what the kingdom of God looks yeah. like, right. and this is how the kingdom of God is going to operate. Right. Amen. 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 So, we begin to look at how is God's timing affecting me. So, when God doesn't respond in the way that I think he should respond, my quick response is God's answer is no. Mm. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. But the truth is, if it's something in his word and it's a promise that I've seen, guess what? His answer is never no. Amen. Right. It might yeah. take a time. It might take a season. It might take a process to get me to that possession of what I'm believing God for, but it's never known. All right, all right. It's never known. Amen. And so I begin to give some illustrations and show some things. So in Mark chapter 8, I talked about uh, the blind man. Y'all remember the scripture? Talked about the blind man. Jesus went into Bethsaida. They brought unto him a blind man. And this man was blind all his life. And they said, can you heal him? Which re leads me to believe this. It leads me to believe that people can intercede and pray, and you can have these prayer partners, and just because y'all gather and pray does not mean that you're going to twist God's arm to make him do something at that moment in time. Mm. I'm not saying that he can't. Okay, I'm not saying that he can't. But I do understand this. I understand that as a young believer, God responds and moves quicker than an older believer. I'm just saying, okay? Why do I say that? I say that because in the process of God answering your prayers, he's taking you to another place to really spend more time with him. God can be more effective with the more time you spend with him than just being a popcorn God and answering your prayers and then you walk on. Y'all with me today? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, simple analogy. How many of y'all have been praying for something and God has not answered it yet? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Doesn't mean that you're any weaker in your faith. Right. Right. right? right. Doesn't mean that you have a less relationship than anybody else. Right. Doesn't mean any of those things. What it means is that God says, well, the longer I keep from answering this, the more time you're going to spend with me. Mm -hmm. And I like spending time with my people. Mm -hmm. Amen. God likes personal time with his people. God spent personal time with Abraham. Mm -hmm. Amen. God spent personal time with Moses. Mm -hmm. Amen. God spent personal time with Joshua. Mm -hmm. God visits his people, speaks to his people, and he wants to spend personal time. God spent personal time with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Yeah. God will just, right. when he wants to, he'll just show up and he'll talk to you. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. So, 
we saw that this group of people came and said, hey, he's blind, you can heal him. And Jesus said, okay, but come with me. So we understand that Jesus took him out of the city, out of the town, and took him outside. And then he was able to pray for him, and the man received his sight. What's the difference between in town and out of town? The only difference is, is that God is going to meet us at his timing. Because a blind man and everybody else could have already said, hold on, we just came from there. Why we got to go back out there? Mm -hmm. I just came from outside into the town looking for you, but now you want me to go back outside. Mm -hmm. why, why is that? Because God wants you to know that what he does, he does it on his timing in the way that he wants to do it. See, a lot of us are expecting God to act and move and respond in the way that we think he should when God is saying, I'm going to do it my way. Amen. My way. Amen. I want to do it my way. Okay. I want you to, I want you to see my process. I want you to see the way that I'm going to do it. I'm not saying no. I'm just saying I want to do it this way and I want to do it at this time. Now, I know this is not popular for a lot of people because a lot of people, they want it now, especially our millennials. Our, our millennials, they love having the answers at their fingertips. Right now. Right now. Give it to me now. Okay. Well, when we're dealing with God, it doesn't work that way. Now, I want you to understand. I'm not saying that God can't. I'm not saying that God won't. I'm not saying any of that. What I'm saying, what if God doesn't do it the time you want him to do it and the way that you want him to do it, how does that affect you? Mm -hmm. That's all I'm saying. Because yep. I've seen God respond. Pastor DeLillian, Pastor Linda, pray for this lady. Boom, instant response. Isn't that good? Amen. Wonderful. Glory to God. Amen. I'd love to have a response like that every time. Amen. But it doesn't happen just like that all the time. Amen. Right. Right. So, so we see the problem. We've been praying for Pastor Cindy and her situation for a long time. Amen. Right. Right. Doesn't change our faith. Right. right. Doesn't change our belief. Right. We still believe in that she's healed. As a matter of fact, the fact of the matter is now faith is the substance of things hoped for with the evidence of things not seen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. Amen. Which means right now we are already believing. That she is healed, we right. just waiting on the manifestation to see it. That's all I'm waiting on. Glory right. to God. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. So we got this process. So we see that this blind man in, in Mark chapter 8, we see that he deals with this situation. And, and, and part of this whole scenario, you could go so many different ways with this, is that Jesus prayed for the man and understand that at the moment in time that Jesus prayed for the man, the man did not instantly get full vision. Right, right. Amen. Right. He only had partial vision. Right. He says, I can see some things. Looks like men, but they look like trees. Looks like they're walking and moving. I don't have the clear vision just yet. Right. Mm -hmm. And Jesus mm -hmm. laid hands and prayed for him again. Right. Amen. Yep. And what did he see? Now the Bible says, now that he could see clearly, but he could see at a distance clearly. I think one of the things that we need to pray for is God, give me the clear vision right, of right. what you want me to do. Right. How you want me to respond to this situation. How am I supposed to approach this problem? Don't you know that many of times when we invite God into the process of what we're doing, it always turns out better than if we try to do it ourselves. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. So the Lord is actually saying to us, man, hey, entreat me before it even happens. That's why it's always good to get up every day and begin to declare what the word of the Lord says. Amen. 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 Today's a great day. Amen. Today's a wonderful day. Yes. Yes. Today's a prosperous day. Mm -hmm. Today's a successful day. 
Today, I have favor everywhere I go. I have favor on my job. I have favor with my bosses. I have favor with my co-workers. I have favor with the students today. I have favor everywhere I go. And grace and mercy are following me all along the way. Amen. And today, these systems that are in it, and we were talking about all these systems that, 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 that have been created by man. Well, the systems exist. Okay, they do exist. But one thing that I truly believe, that the systems exist, and the systems exist to work for me and not against me. Mm. Amen. Amen. Yeah. We, we're looking at system bad. Well, Uncle Sam, you know, he's, he's, he's taxing me, and, and we got all these taxes, and we got all this stuff in the process, and, and waiting, and, and all this kind of stuff. Well, you know what? If you believe that the system is supposed to work for you because you are a child of God, Amen. Then they should begin to work for you. Amen. Now, is, will it happen instantly? Not, not all the time. Amen. But there are times when I see glimpses of it and I see parts of it working for me and not against me. Things that used to work against me, I see a change in the atmosphere and now they're working for me. Amen. I can tell you right now. One of the things that we've been believing for is our VA benefits. Amen. And we've been fighting this thing for years. Yes. Amen. Right. But when I begin to declare that the VA system is working for me and not against me, right. amen, amen. Mm -hmm. it's going to work for me. God began to open doors. God began to put us yes. in line with people that were in place right. waiting right. for us to show up, right. amen, uh -huh. so that things can happen. And I went, Pastor Newsom, I went from a 20% to a 60% oh, wow. Jesus. in less than six months. Glory. Okay. In less than six months, okay? Yeah. Just boom, boom, just start happening. Why? Because the system, and you all know, veterans, y'all know, mm -hmm. <laughs> the system is designed to work against you, right. not work for you, amen? Right. Well, glory right. to right. God. The system is working for me. It's going to continue to work for me, amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. That's just one. There's so many other things that God is doing. Amen? Amen. And then we went on to Matthew chapter 13. And it talks about the good man sowing the good seed Amen. in a certain time. But the, the, the parallel to this, understand that everything is timing. We're understanding it's timing. Everything is God's timing. Right. And so here you have a good man, the good man of the house. He sowed good seed into good ground, mm -hmm. but as time went on, and we don't know exactly how much time, but we know it was night and days and sun and rain and all this kind of stuff, yeah. the stuff yeah. that takes place in order for there to be a harvest, yeah. what we find out is that when the seed began to produce a harvest, something else grew along with it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Something else. So you had the tares that were coming along with the wheat. Mm -hmm. Amen. And if you don't know which one is which, you can actually uproot the wrong one. Right. Amen. Right. So you have to wait a certain time to see what it produces in order to understand this is the wheat and I got to pull yeah. the wheat yeah. without tearing out the wheat or disturbing the wheat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. But here's what happened. In the process, now, of people... This is how people operate. This is how they think. His servants came to him and said, Master, what has happened? Because, number one, you're a good guy. We understand that. Okay? Sort of like what Pastor Newsom was saying, okay? You know, I, I give, I tithe, I keep the commandments. I know everything that I'm supposed to do. Okay? But, you know, he said, what else do I have to do? And Jesus said, go and sell all that you have. All right, come and follow me. Well, he didn't want to. He didn't want to part with those things. Amen. Mm -hmm. So they understood. They went to the good man of the house that so good seed and good ground, and they're saying, "What happened?" Mm -hmm. He said, "An enemy is coming. Mm -hmm. An enemy came in, and he sowed bad seed amongst the good seed." Amen. Mm -hmm. Right. Which leads me to know that. As good as coming up, our faith is growing up, there's also going to be some bad seed or some bad harvest that comes along with yes, it. Yes, because yes. that's just what the enemy does. Yes, yes. Amen? Mm -hmm. 
with the good, there's always going to be bad. Amen? Amen. It, just, it just happens. It, it's just natural. It, it just takes place. And so to try to explain it, sometimes you just can't explain it other than the fact that the devil is going to do what he's going to do. Yeah. Amen? Amen? And we just need to do what we yeah. need to do. Yeah. That's right. And so, uh, so again, there's a time lapse. There's a process. There's something that's taking place in this whole thing. Yeah. Then I went on to John chapter 11, and it talks about Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. Right. Amen. Uh -huh. And so yeah. here is, is a real, real tough scenario for a lot of people because uh, Lazarus died. We know he died. Mm -hmm. Okay. But we also know that this is the man that Jesus loved. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. But he still died. Yeah. yeah. All right. But also... He, he loved Martha and Mary as well. Right. Okay? His sister. So he, he loved them as well. So they send for Jesus. And Jesus says, well, you know what? This is not unto death. Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. But he died. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Y'all with me? Yeah. It ain't unto death, but he died. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Yeah. So there was a portion of him that died. Pastor uh, Deacon Jimmy kind of highlighted on this. He says, man, in the flesh, I got to die. But in the spirit, I'm alive. That's right. Amen. That's right. In the flesh, I'm going to die. But in the spirit, I'm going to live. I am alive. So you cannot kill my spirit, man. Okay? The flesh is going to die. But here's the, the interesting part is that why did Jesus not come when they called him? Time. It's his timing. Time. 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 It's his timing, okay? Again, they didn't understand that, okay? How many of y'all know that this whole story of Lazarus, and I said this last week, this whole story of Lazarus, it's really not about Lazarus at all. Lazarus is just a part in the story, okay? It's about Mary and Martha, okay? It's about his disciples, okay? I move y'all on the Pastor Delilah used to say to she used to homeschool our kids, and she say that she says, every opportunity that we encounter is a learning opportunity. True. Yeah. Okay, right. y'all remember yeah. that? Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. Every opportunity is a learning opportunity. Exactly. All right? So Jesus took every opportunity. Even though we highlight this story about Lazarus, and there's nothing wrong with that. You can do that. Okay. You can call this this story all kind of names. You know, you can call it the, the Lazarus Factor. You can call it uh, the Weeping uh, Sisters. You, you can call it anything you want to call it. You can highlight all kinds of things out here. But the fact of the matter is, is that this story was about two sets of individuals. Okay? It was about Mary and Martha. And it was about his disciples. Because he's instructing his disciples in one. And he says, you know what? He said, thank God this happened. It happened for your sake. Yes. Okay. Yes. Right? Learnings. Yeah. Yep. They, they, he, said, he said, this is good that it happened while we were here. Mm -hmm. They're thinking, well, you know, he said, our brother's asleep. Well, he's asleep. Don't wake him up. Why we got to go all the way back and wake him up? <laughs> he said, y'all don't understand. It's not him about being asleep. He is really dead. Well, hold on. You said he wasn't going to die. Okay? But he's dead. Some things you just can't explain. Okay? You just can't explain. But that's okay. The deeper we get into this, the more that God will begin to give us revelation. So all these things that I used on God's timing. So there's one more that I want to give you. And this is the thing. So I like to do uh, uh, some... some uh, 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 some uh, sword I'm looking for. I'd like to go back and just talk about it for a minute. Okay. Uh, and uh, but I want you to go with me to uh, Luke chapter four. Amen. Amen. Let's go to Luke four. Amen. <laughs> so Luke four and verse thirteen. Okay. Y'all with me? Y'all good? Amen. Amen. All right. Glory to God. This is still this is still time. We're still talking about time. So I'm going to close this whole teaching on the time factor or trusting in God's time with this message here. 
Our next message that we're going to go into, our series of messages is that we're going to go into, is called Your Season of Victory. Ooh, okay. Yeah, that sounds. Yeah, yeah. Your, your Season of Victory. So when I, when I look back and I look at the new me, the new me understands now the part that I play in the kingdom of God and what God is doing in me. And he's renewing me. So I have a better understanding now. We don't stop here. I don't want you to say, well, I heard that message. I'm good. No. It doesn't stop there because we're always renewing the new me. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's right. Yep. And now that I understand a little bit better on how God operates in time, okay, kind of gives me a better understanding of the new me, how God operates, and how time affects me or how I affect time. Mm -hmm. Or how do I let time affect me? Amen. I look at some of y'all today, and some of y'all uh, would say, well, I'm um, this age, okay? But if you really look at it, God has reversed the aging process in a lot of our people. Okay. Amen? Amen. Yeah. He's, he literally has reversed it, okay? Because some people say, you know, well, I'll just use me for example. So I'm, I'm 62, okay? I'm, I'm 62. And so I'm running around this school with 15, 16, 17 year olds, okay? Chasing them up and down the hall, wrestling them down, whatever you got to do, okay? And, 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 and so, and so at, 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 at 62, but the people that I work with will never believe that I'm 62 years old. Right. They just don't. They're like, you know, well, how they, they think I'm. Some said that I'm in my late 40s, I'm going to be in 50s, but when I tell them I'm 62 years old, they like, man, that's impossible, you can't be. I said, well, I am, okay? Yeah. Uh, so I believe that God reverses the aging process. Restores to you. Restore, yeah. There you go. Amen. Restores yeah. time. Amen. Uh, and so, uh, so now that I understand more, I understand more about the new me, I understand how time affects who we are, how we should affect time, amen, and how God looks at time. But in, in, in Luke chapter 4 and verse 13, it says, when the devil had ended all the temptations, he departed from him for a season. Mm -hmm. Okay, he departed. Right. Now, so, so that word, and, and, and so... I don't think I have to go back and read to you. Most of y'all know the temptation, right? So Jesus went to John, his cousin, in the wilderness. John baptized him in the river Jordan. Immediately after that, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness where he was tempted, okay, or went into the wilderness for 40 days where he fasted and prayed, and at that time, he was tempted by the enemy. Mm -hmm. right. Amen. And so, so, which this might help some of y'all. I hope it does. Some of the things that you go through is orchestrated and led by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. That's right. For your betterment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. For your better. He's a man. Come on now. I thought I'm not supposed to be tempted. You're not tempted by God. Okay, but the fact is that the Holy Spirit is doing a work on the inside of you, and the only way that He can get some of that stuff out of you is by taking you into certain situations. Amen. Amen. Yep. And so, here is a great illustration that the Holy Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness. Amen. Amen. I don't know about y'all. But I'll spend some time in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And even in some of my areas of, of life right now, it's still wilderness yes, time. Yes, yes. Amen. Amen. So it doesn't mean that I'm in the wilderness uh, uh, the constant periodic time. It means that there's times when I go into the wilderness, it feels dry, damp, moist, ugly, hot, whatever, however you want to put it. Okay. But there's times when part of me is going through a wilderness experience, but you don't see it on the outside because God is sustaining me while we're going through the process. Y'all following me? Yes. Amen. Which means that, look, we're not walking around here depressed. 
We're not walking around here, woe is me. We're not walking around here, nothing good ever happens to me. Okay? Come on now. We're not walking around here like that. Why? Because guess what? I am led by the Holy Spirit, and he has me here for a reason. So, uh, uh, just a, a quick response to y'all. When you feel like you're in that situation, one of the biggest and uh, the best ways to respond to it is, Lord, help me to learn what you want me to learn while I'm here. Yeah. That's right. Amen. Amen. Okay? Help me to learn. Yeah. Because the quicker I learn this thing, the quicker I can get out of this wilderness spot. Right. 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 But guess what? I'm going right into another one. Mm -hmm. Amen. I know y'all don't want to hear that. Come on. Come on. I don't want to hear that. Come on. Do you think that this was a one-time wilderness experience for Jesus? No. Jesus went from one wilderness experience to another wilderness experience. Take the Apostle Paul. Do you think he just had one wilderness experience? No. From the time he had his uh, road to Damascus experience, it was just one experience after another. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, we, and even if you study the lives, John, take John, okay? John was, they tried to kill John so many different ways, but they couldn't kill him. They couldn't kill him. So they finally had to exile him to an island. Mm -hmm. So here he is. <clears throat> they literally boiled John in hot oil. Okay? Mm -hmm. They wanted to kill him. Right, right. We're going to have fried John today. Okay? They couldn't get, y'all understand what yeah, I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Okay? They put him in a pot of hot oil trying to kill him. And they couldn't kill him. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They put him in a fiery furnace. Couldn't kill him. Daniel, they put him in a lion's den. Couldn't kill him. Y'all with me? Right. He can't die. Till your time is up. Amen. 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 And so, and so here, so this word right here, and it says um, that the enemy departed for, from him for a season. Mm -hmm. Right? In other words, well, there's another translation. It says the enemy departed from him for another opportunity. Oh, wow. Right, right. right. For a while. Yep. Which says this. It says that though the enemy, or you might feel like you're in a position or something is happening, understand that the enemy is going to try to return again at another time. Right? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. But I got news for you today. You said, Can you give me some good news, Pastor? I'm going to give you some good news. Okay? I got news for you today. Glory to God. Because the enemy can only operate on God's timing. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Amen. What he allows. Huh? What he allows. What he allows. Okay. Yeah. Go back and read Job. Okay. He can only attack at a certain time that the Lord allows him to do that. Yeah. Amen. But guess what? I want to I wanna leave you with this. That every time the enemy attacking you, you need to understand that it's an appropriate time for him to attack you because it's an appropriate time for you to get a breakthrough. Mm -hmm. Are y'all following me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See, the, the, the enemy will come at an appointed time, but how many of y'all really believe and understand the word of God says that I will take everything all things, and I'll turn it around to work for your good. Amen. 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 So if you're under attack right now, glory to God, because there's a breakthrough. Yeah. Right. If I'm under attack right now, glory to God, there's a miracle getting ready to happen. Right. Amen. Amen. If, there, if I'm yeah. under attack right now, this is my season to be under attack, mm -hmm. guess what? There's an opportunity awaiting for me. Amen? Amen. If I'm under attack, glory to God, God's getting ready to open a door. Right. God is getting ready to do something spectacular. God is getting ready to do something supernatural. God is getting ready to make something happen for each and every one of you. So you know what? I don't shun the attacks of the enemy. As a matter of fact, I begin to question myself. 
If there's not an attack going on in my life somewhere, then I must not be doing something for the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. So the more that I press into the things of God, the more opposition I'm going to get, yeah. but the reward is going to be greater. Yeah. 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 Amen. Yeah. Amen. So as we conclude this session of trusting in God's timing, right. it doesn't just affect you. Everybody in the Bible, it affects Abraham had to wait till he was 100 years old to receive the promise of God. 100 years old. And he had to make sure, God had to make sure that nothing was working and everything was dead and it looked impossible. As a matter of fact, it was impossible until God stepped in. So if you're looking at your situation right now, I'm here to tell you, it's not impossible. God will turn it around. And he will fix it for you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you. We love you. We glorify you. And we thank you, Lord God. Father, as we begin just to walk in this trust, Lord God. We're trusting in your timing, Father, that you have everything set. You have everything in place. You have everything orchestrated, Father. And we declare that we walk in this thing. We love you. And we bless you for it. And we thank you today. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God for joining in with us today here at Kingdom Life Ministries. If you have any prayer requests or anything, just please post them, and we'll be glad to, to have our prayer sisters pray for you, which is Pastor Dilly and Pastor Linda, who pray every morning over every prayer request and every situation. They pray for everybody in this ministry by name, and they, and they uh, begin to declare the promises of God over them. So uh, we thank you all for being with us today. We love you, and we bless you. Uh, and we uh, look forward to seeing you next time. Hi, to Brother Bill. Oh, Bishop's online? Yeah. All right, Bishop, we love you. Bless you. So we have Bishop who is uh, still uh, in Europe. Of course, we thank God uh, the Lord brought uh, uh, Dr. Newsom back with us uh, here. Uh, Sister Cindy's in North Carolina. Yes. So Sister Cindy's in North Carolina, and we bless y'all. The Gomez's are in Florida. Uh, we thank Helen. God for them as it's well. Home. Sister Helen's home. Sister Helen's home. Yeah. Amen. They, they're giving me impact, uh, feedback. Now I'm just sharing with you. Yes. Sister Helen is home. She was in the hospital. Praise God. She's doing good. So we thank God for that. And everybody else that's out there, we bless you. We love you. And we'll see you next time here at Kingdom Life Ministries International. On the count of three, we're going to go out with a shout out to the Lord. One, two, three. Jesus! 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 Jesus. Jesus.